Uh, thank you, Director. Uh, thank you, uh, Director, for, um, for, fi for, for Files' response to my letter earlier this year about private equity's growing role in the insurance sector. You mentioned that once a company uh, transfers its pension obligations in a pension risk transfer, the PBGC uh, guarantee no longer applies. Participants would lose protections under ERISA. You reemphasize that. Thank you. What new problems, my que two questions, what new problems arise from these practices where pensions are transferred to life insurers and how do they pose risks to workers without ERISA and PBGC protections? And do you have, I guess, three questions. Do you have additional concerns for the broader financial system, its impact? Uh, no, thank, thank you, Senator Brown, for that question. Um, we share your interest in the importance of this topic. Uh, the U.S. insurance sector, and particularly the life and retirement sector, is critical for millions of working Americans that are relying on these products for their retirement security. In our letter, we highlighted the four key areas that we're focused on. First, enhancing FIO's monitoring of the potential liquidity risk of the entire sec life insurance sector, but also particularly related to PE-owned insurers. Second, we're looking at regulatory mechanisms and whether they are appropriately designed for issues related to credit risk and capital adequacy to accommodate and appropriately regulate this type of business model. Third, we are also looking at the offshore reinsurance implications, particularly the increased interconnectedness between Bermuda and the U.S. markets where certain blocks of business are being transferred offshore. And fourth, we're also looking at potential conflicts of interest. These are important issues for our topic, and we'll be working closely with the NEIC and the states on their focus going forward and look forward to further updating this committee as that work progresses. Thank you, and, and we will ask for that. And my, my interest in this issue has increased in part because Congress just worked a year ago, I mean, worked for several years and was able to fix problems in the multi-employer pension system. We know the human costs that failing pensions pose to workers who earn these benefits and who have that expectation through a lifetime of work. Congress established, as you know, in a bipartisan way, PBGC and passed ERISA. It's imperative that insurers, and we're counting on both of you on this, to ensure, it's imperative that insurers not be allowed to do an end run around the system established to protect pensioners. Uh, Commissioner uh, Berain, thank you again for, for being here. I've heard from nonprofit associations reaching out to their state insurance commissioners and NAIC about difficulties finding and affording property and casualty insurance. Uh, my question is this, what, what are the tools available for state insurance commissioners to solve this market failure? And it is a market failure. So thank you, Senator Brown, for the opportunity. As you know, the NEIC has long opposed the expansion of the Liability Risk Retention Act to allow RRGs to write commercial property insurance. Um, it is our sense that commercial property insurance is generally widely available, and we have serious concerns that nonprofits that are already vulnerable could be put at greater risk from a consumer protection standpoint if they are allowed to purchase their property insurance from an entity that is not subject to the same rigorous standards and multi-state enforcement as admitted carriers, uh, which really creates an uneven playing field. Most states have a residual market for property insurance, including commercial property insurance. I know in my state, I've queried our nonprofits, and this is not an issue that we see in at least the state of Maryland. Other commissioners across the country are making similar efforts to look at their markets to see where issues exist, and we would be happy to know about specific circumstances and make ourselves available to work with nonprofits that are having difficulty getting commercial property insurance. Your assessment uh, differs a bit from ours. I, it's a serious problem that hasn't been solved in the marketplace in the past. When faced with similar market issues uh, that, that span the country, Congress passed the, the uh, Liability Risk Retention Act. As you know, I'm working to amend the LRA to narrowly address this issue of affecting community-based nonprofits. Uh, Director Sykes, are you concerned about this gap in the market and ensuring nonprofits have access to the insurance they need? Uh, no, thank you for that question. It's an issue that we've also um, been tracking, as Commissioner Bahrain mentioned. Um, it's an area we've been engaging with various stakeholders on the topic with regard to their ability um, to get coverage. Um, I think we'll look forward to working with uh, the NEIC and your team as, as we look into this issue in more depth. Okay, and, and count on us to do that. We've been working with NAIC to find a solution. Risk retention groups are regulated by state insurance commissioners under NAIC regulations. And uh, Commissioner 
I just wanted to ask again, can we work together to find a solution that responsibly increases insurance capacity for, for RGs to address this problem? We absolutely want to work together for a construction solution for nonprofits who need commercial property insurance, and we're happy to work with you and your staff and with FIO. Thank you, counter us for that. And um, I, I wanted to ask a third question. I won't take time. My five minutes is up about climate uh, catastrophe risk, uh, and we will submit something in writing or maybe a, a part of a second round or my colleagues, probably one of them will ask something about that.